from Ruler Live. This is the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, why research has apparently shown that cyclists are better humans. Although clearly not all of us, because we're also going to be discussing what bike you would ride if you were a drug lord. This is after a member of a local cycling club is now facing extradition and charges in the US. Yeah, well, we've also got the weirdest and most eye-watering new product in cycling, the latest twist in the Chris Froome saga, and we revisit the topic from last week's show. Are bike brands ripping us all off? This week in the world of cycling, we learned that the search for improved cycling performance has taken an unexpected turn after the launch of the Saddle Spur. Yes, this year's weirdest cycling product which has been designed to hold your pelvis in a fixed position. Are you ready for this? Oh my God! Worse still, according to Saddle Spur's website, it reimagines the interaction between the cyclist and the bike. <laughs> That is really not something that I either need to reimagine no. or just think about at all. What on earth? I feel like we should really stress that the upwards facing bit at the back, I don't know what you call it, is that the spike spur thing? The prong, the spike, well I mean I suppose it is a spur, isn't well, it really? Whatever it is, it is designed to go behind you. Behind. Okay. Very clear. That is good to know, isn't it? But yeah. uh, still, moving on. We also learned that the UCI might be about to ban stuff again, although in a strange move, it might be banning cyclocross racers who don't want to race World Cups. Yeah, but this is in response to the current men's World Cup leader, Thibaut Nace, not racing the latest round because he was tired, despite racing a non-World Cup event the day before. Well, yeah. Carrot or stick mm. is the analogy that springs to mind here. UCI. Uh, now, finally, we learned this week that cyclists are better humans. Not all of us, though. No, no. There was an interesting piece published in the recent journal of the Environmental Psychology. That is one of my favourites. Thought it was definitely in my top five psychologies. That environmental psychology. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Schuster et al. from Fern Universität in Hagen, Germany. Good work. Well, that yeah, was... vaguely. Right, anyway, <laughs> have showed a link between mode of transport and, I quote, orientation towards a common good. In my words, being a better human. Yes, in essence, cyclists rated higher in key areas like social participation in organisation, neighbourhood solidarity and neighbourly helpfulness than car drivers. Yeah, so the researchers concluded that cycling was the only variable where there was a significant positive predictor after controlling for other variables, and therefore mobility behaviour is associated with the orientation towards the common good. So, therefore, they say encouraging more people to cycle instead of driving may have even more profound benefits than first thought. Interesting. Well, what do we think then? You can see why it might, I think, not being in an insulated metal car definitely helps to engage more with your surroundings, whether that's nature or just the urban jungle. We can all agree on that. I think it's partly what makes cycling more enjoyable, but the big caveat is whether or not it's cycling that makes people more engaged, or whether people who choose to cycle for transport are already more oriented towards a common good. Now, in isolation, I think you could definitely be sceptical of research like this, because it does sound a little bit bonkers, doesn't mm -hmm. it? But there are actually loads of studies that show how our environment affects our behaviour from architecture to roads. So you can see that it might have an effect, but clearly what holds true at a population level doesn't necessarily transfer to the individual, as we'll see. Yes. Well, this is the most intriguing story in which I first saw in our local newspaper, but has gone nationwide. A drug lord and cyclist facing 120 years in jail. Yeah, they had me hooked <laughs> with this one, right? Basically, a 49-year-old man is facing extradition from the UK to the US, where he faces charges for masterminding a multi-million dollar drugs bracket. <laughs> now, what struck me first was how him being a cyclist was 
initially in the headlines of these newspaper articles, it seemed to be used to illustrate his nefarious nature. Like, you know, drug lord and cyclists, uh, you know. <laughs> Suspicious. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he arrived to answer bail at his local police station on his bike, by the look of it, and I couldn't help wonder what bike he was riding. What bike does a drug lord, drug lord ride? We know for sure that they're going to be driving a white Range Rover Sport with blacked yes. out windows, right? Yeah, or a Mercedes G-Wagon. Ooh, that's a good drug dealer car, isn't it? But what bike? Mm, well, our team of amateur sleuths and true crime fans found an image on Chipping Sodbury Cycling Club's Instagram where the suspect in question, we think, can be astride a blacked out specialised <laughs> S-Work tarmac with G-Race and stealthy NV wheels. So it's basically like a black Range Rover Sport, isn't it? Basically, yes. Yeah, a similar price. As well, I think, the two. Pro probably, yeah, but last year's model, not this year, because this year's is too expensive. Even for drug lords, yes. cycling is too expensive now. There we go. Um, you say that, I think actually his, his assets might have got frozen. Maybe. Six million could, dollars yeah. of assets got frozen since yeah. the charge race. But I have actually also heard on the local cycling grapevine, because I mean, this is literally like our local neighborhood, isn't it? Chipping Sodbury, it's just like about five miles away from GCM. Is that actually, I had no idea where it was, actually. Yeah, yeah, literally. Um, so he, he rides, like, all around you know our him? local area. No. Have you seen him? No, I haven't, no. But on the local cycling grapevine, I've heard that he has also been buying Cervelos Ooh. as well. So there you go, yeah. An S5? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. If you were a drug lord, what would you ride, Mel? Um, it would have to be a matte black Pinarello. Dogma. Really? Probably, yeah. That's quite, that is quite good. You, what about you? Well, I mean, for practical reasons, I'd be tempted to... New, <laughs> practical. Well, for New Canyon Grail, which has got down tube storage, mm. isn't it? But would the police know to check your down tube? Probably for any not. Of, well, unless they watch some of the videos. Yeah, maybe. maybe. I mean, to be fair, I think this guy is so high up the drugs food chain that he probably hasn't been carrying anything dodgy in his down tube. But uh, yeah. anyway, no, I actually... Uh, I probably would get a Bastion. Have you ever seen them? No. Oh, they're about the blingest, coolest bikes known to humanity and 100% uh, drug dealer bike. Do you reckon, what about a de-restricted e-bike as well? I feel so like that. So you could get away, like yeah. a getaway but then vehicle. you may as well ride a motorbike. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what I think about that. I mean, I suppose if you're already breaking the law by smuggling drugs. Yeah, I don't think a de-restricted e-bike as much. No, it's probably not going to. No, touch so what's that? Another few years in jail. He's already got 120. But then you know, maybe that's the thing that gets you caught. Maybe the police wouldn't bat an eyelid about your specialised tarmac, but they'll pull you over for riding a de-restricted e-bike, and then suddenly they'll find out that you are a nefarious drug lord. Yeah, when you think about it like that, maybe. Yeah. I mean, you said you'd ride a moped earlier if you were yeah, a drug lord. Yeah, I did, lord. but I didn't, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't I, see I, you I, on a moped. I, I take that back. I can't I see you on a moped back. for anything. I just, I just thought, you know, it's quick and nippy through the streets. Oh, hence why you're going for an unrestricted yeah. e-bike now. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I feel like it, going off track here, but if you really wanted to get away with it, like, you know, like a sit-up Dutch bike, basket on the front, cute dog in there. Yeah, not okay. Not going to get caught there. You're you. never going to attract no. attention, are you, on one no. of those things? Okay, well, anyway... I'm genuinely, like, I've been giving this a lot of thought, right? <laughs> I'm really interested to know what you think. What bike would you ride if you were a drug lord? So money, no object, plus looking to be a little bit, you know, a bit bling maybe, yeah. might as well, you know, you've got, you got a bit of money that you need to launder. Spend it on bikes. Send it to Cervelo's way. The, maybe, like, this is going to be the new thing. Just all drug lords are going to be on bikes now. Well, there we go. Started a trend. Started a trend. Get involved in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Might get some more viewers, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, if you end up in prison, you've got a lot of time on your hands. Can you, do you think you can watch YouTube? I don't know. I was watching um, something on the BBC about prison, and they have a TV. Some of you have got a Chromecast. Well, there we go. I don't know. Answers in the comments, please. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. 
Cycling shorts now, and we'll start with the news that all cyclocross fans have been waiting for. The calendars of Wout van Aert and Matthew van der Poel. Our globalcyclingnetwork.com website reports that the two should face off five times this winter, which is perhaps not as much as we'd like, but those will still be the dates for the diary. Indeed they will. It seems to me a little bit like van Aert doesn't like Christmas, yeah. okay? Because he's racing on the 22nd, the 23rd, the 28th, and the 29th of December, and then also perhaps he doesn't like New Year's Eve either, because I'm pretty sure it was like the 1st or 2nd of January. Really? It's basically like a buzzkill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but the Grinch. A maybe little bit, needs, yeah. Yeah, maybe he also needs a reason not to eat too much turkey. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, with... you, need to, you need to feel for all his races. Yeah, at the same well, time. that is true. Yeah, anyway, sticking with pro racing, not turkeys, um, <laughs> there was an intriguing Chris Froome story in the media last week, wasn't there? Yes, apparently the source of his lack of form since the beginning, beginning of his comeback from a life-threatening crash has been due to not his disc brakes, but his bike fit, apparently. Yeah, bizarrely, yes. he has said that his new team bikes have been set up significantly differently to his Pinarellos of old, which given that he has the same mechanic now as he did then, strikes me as weird in the extreme. That is. Very strange. But still, I hope for Chris's sake, we will see him finish his career in a blaze of glory. I hope so too, yeah. Anyway, next up, we saw this really cool article on lookout.co uh, from Santa Cruz, California. And it's an interview with a guy called Juan Castillo. And it follows how 20 years ago, he received a bike from a charitable organization as his family had recently migrated to the US from Mexico. Yeah, so apparently cycling has always been part of his life since then. But now he's 29 years old and Juan is teaching cycling to grade school kids in Monterey and Santa Cruz, California, Santa Cruz counties, rather, which, I don't know, that's kind of cool, isn't it? You that's never know nice, yeah. what a good deed will do. Yeah. yeah. And now, I received this in the post, okay, last week. According to the gift tag, it's from Carol Thompson, aka Cadence Cat. I'll be honest, man, on. It took me a little while to work out what it was, right? Because all I saw initially was that it fights wrinkles. And so I assumed there was something that Dan must have been using <laughs> on his face. But no, apparently it's for clothes. So fights wrinkles, repels pet hair, softens clothes, long-lasting freshness. So there we go, I hope it's powerful. You really. do need that. And a big thank you to Carol, because Sai needs all the help he can get in navigating through day-to-day -day life. So we're all very grateful. Yeah, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you use it? Uh, I believe uh, you pop it in the tumble dryer, so dryer sheets. Okay, but so. it still, I think it still means that when your clothes come out, you have to fold them nicely so they don't get wrinkled. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can't just stuff it in a kit bag? No. Okay, all right. Well, there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carol. Right, we'll finish, shall we? Coming back to the topic of last week's show. Are bikes too expensive? and are we being ripped off? Yeah, we had so, so many comments, so thank you Ed, to everybody that got stuck in. And a lot of people were saying that we need to make content about less expensive bikes. So we're definitely gonna be taking that on board, aren't we, Si? Yeah, 100%, thank you very much for the feedback. Um, and then having spent a little bit more time reflecting on this topic the past week or so, a couple of things cropped up. Firstly, I can't help but thinking there is a perfect storm at the moment, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Gerard Ruman, who we interviewed <coughs> last week, said that the bikes people want now, and by that I think he means that the bikes people are actually buying have got more complicated, they've got more expensive tech on like electronic gears and disc brakes, etc. And so I think that the reason those are the bikes people are buying now is not because of all of the marketing spend, but I think principally it's because those are the tech innovations that us consumers consider it's worth upgrading for, right? Yeah, there's less reason to buy a new rim brake bike because your current rim brake bike is still amazing, right? Well, that's right, yeah. And so therefore, most people don't upgrade unless we think it's worth upgrading to something else, i.e. I'm gonna make the move to electronic shifting, yeah. I'm gonna make the move to disc brakes or whatever. Secondly, it's also worth pointing out that if you are looking at buying a new bike or bits for your bike, then oh my word, there are some epic discounts now, including actually, we've got some of our own, we'll mm, tell you about yes. this coming up. So, I mean, frankly, having gone through a couple of years, three years of acute bike parts shortages, and then the high prices as a result, 
think it's fair to say that things are beginning to correct yeah, a little bit now, so. aren't they? And lastly, this comment from Just When I Thought jumped out at us. No one can rip you off if you refuse to buy their products. I mean, I think that is a really important point, yeah, it is, isn't yeah. it? No one is saying you have to upgrade your bike or you have to buy a new one. And I would include GCN in this, by the way. We don't say that you have to have new bikes or the most up-to-date kit at all either. No, and if you feel like bikes are too expensive, don't buy them. Buy less expensive bits and or buy second hand. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, get involved in the comment section as well down there, having sort of seamlessly segued from drug lord bikes into <laughs> this whole debate about over expensive bikes. But anyway, get involved. Really, really interested to hear your thoughts. And, and like I said, we have been reading your comments, which you've been leaving in the thousands. So thank you for that. Uh, now, speaking of discounts, as we said, okay, Black Friday is coming up and GCN sale. Oh, it's already started, hasn't it? Yeah, did you get the um, early bird Black Friday discount? I did. You know what? I and I was help. particularly <laughs> pleased because I don't know whether any of you remember, but in 2020, when we last changed our GCN kit, I was left out. I had to wait ages. You were all there swanning around in your new fancy they kit. They did leave you waiting for some time. They did. Anyway, so here we go, surrounded by uh, Castelli. So um, anyway, head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com um, because there's some epic, epic bargains to be had, up to 50% off. And everything Castelli discounted. There you go. 50% cool. as well, that's massive. That is a whopper, isn't it? Ooh. So yeah, see, things are starting to, anyway. Uh, <laughs> right, uh, we also have got some very exciting news, haven't we? We've got some competition winners. We have, we've got lots of announce. competition winners we actually. We do, yeah. So first of all, the Wahoo Kicker Move. So this was the super cool uh, competition, I suppose you could say, it was, it was, uh, yeah. where you had to guess whose room Wahoo had recreated at the recent Ruler show. Manon, can you put people out of their misery now? Whose room was it? Alison Jackson. It was Alison Jackson, Paris <laughs> Bay winner. Um, so uh, anyway, that's super cool. Congratulations to those of you that got it right. But big congratulations to those Dawson who got it right and was randomly selected to take the Wahoo kick and move. So that is uh, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool indeed. And then what was the other competition, Manon? We also had our mouse competition winners and we have 25 winners. And we'd probably be here a while reeling off all those names. So we're going to put them on the screen now. That's a good shortcut, isn't it? It is, yeah. Especially because not only would it take ages to read them out, but also that's 25 opportunities to get it massively wrong. Yeah. So there yeah. we go. Anyway, <laughs> if you are one of 25 winners, congratulations. Mouse interlock, phone cases and bike mounts winging their way to you. It's now time for hack forward slash bodge. Oh yes, right. First up, we have this one from Blackie196. Old wheel repurposed as a light fitting, okay? Interesting. Uh, an old damaged carbon wheel, they say. Old brake cables, a cheap LED light from eBay, and a salad bowl from Ikea. And they've made a ceiling light, which, to be fair... Where are the actual lights? Uh, not immediately obvious, is it? But no. uh, it's a nice wheel, partial to a Mavic Cosmic. So there we go. Uh, is there anything wrong with the wheel in the first place? Well, it says a damaged wheel, so potentially. Mm. But I think that's quite cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I mean, it's got to be the right room. Yeah. Hasn't I it? feel like if you had a really cool pain cave, yeah. they'd look like two of them hanging from the ceiling would look like. Otherwise, cool. it's very, if that was like in your sitting room, that's quite a bike nerd thing to do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It have is. you seen my new light? <laughs> it was an old bike wheel. I feel like so and Ollie might have, for example. Yeah, I think you might be right there. If one of the GCM presenters were, were to have this, it'd be Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it totally would. Um, but no, I like that very much. Yeah, me good, too. good hacking. That's a hack from yeah, me. Yeah, I'd say hack too. There you go. And 86% uh, of GCN app users have also voted it a hack. Very so uh, nice. it's a good start, that, isn't it? Yeah, very good. On to the next one. And this is from a username I can't really pronounce, but I'm going to give it a go. Bernat. Pedaloni something. 
Well, you said it better. You say it better than me. Well, I mean, I've completely made it up too. But Bernabio Pedaloni was mm, what it looks like. Nice. Anyway, Salitalia saddles already have a built-in thread, but the mounts for every light brands are obviously not available. Due to bad weather, I decided to draw and print one at home. After a couple of iterations, now it seems really decent. That looks slick. It doesn't does, it? doesn't it? Imagine if we could all just magic something like that up at home. <sighs> Oh, to be an engineer. Yeah, oh, to be an engineer. Printer. What can we do? Ride bicycles. What can other people do? 3D print stuff. And ride bicycles. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Um, no, I think that is mega. I had no idea that our cello tally saddles had threads underneath <laughs> for that actually. purpose. But so now I've seen, I want one. Yeah, I'm going to go home and have a look at my threads and my saddle now. Yeah. Do you know my first world problem at the minute is What's that, um, <laughs> it sounds awful. The two bikes that I most like riding to work on are aero bikes, because they're faster, right? Um, but the seat tube and the seat post are D-shaped, and so my, none of my uh, lights want to sit properly. That is a problem, actually, yeah. Yeah, for like, you know, idiots yeah. who commute on really expensive yeah. bikes. But anyway, so there we go. So actually, that would get me out of a right sticky situation. Maybe that, there's a market available. I think there is a market, yeah. yeah. Anyway, 95% of you lot say that is a hack. I think that's a... Proper hat. What are the five percent playing at? That's a good point. What's I think wrong that, with it? I think that yeah, those are the people that like the five percent that spoil their ballot papers or whatever, isn't yeah. it? It's just like, pff, come on, guys, that is, that there is no clearer hack than that. Um, we even got video sent in for it. Yeah, very cool. There you go. Thank you very much, uh, Bernabio <laughs> Pedaloni. Um, right, next up, we got this one, which uh, which I really love. So um, slow window said, uh, I got a hand me down burly trailer after my daughter's born. I don't like the idea of hooking it up to a carbon frame. No, I'm with you on that one. So my only options were my wife's mountain bike and my fat bike. Burley doesn't make a skewer or hitch adapter for a fat bike hub. So, slow Indo went and made one, didn't they? So uh, anyway, cool. we've got, yeah, we've got this wicked description, uh, including plasma cutting a T-shape out of five mil steel. I mean, you've oppressed me with that. I feel like Hack, Hack and Bodge used to be like, you know, like really like DIY things. Now we're getting into like engineering things and like... Plasma cutting. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, anyway. Very advanced. Cut a long story short, it works. Um, my hitch allows for the same amount of movement as the manufactured hitch on my wife's bike, and it seems every bit is solid. Mine is just uglier. But what does that matter? Doesn't matter. You've got a trailer. Yeah. It's, it doesn't need to be pretty. I think that's great. So that's a hack from me. Hack from me too. And 90% of you lots, that's a hack as well. 10% of you, is that the aesthetics? There's no zip ties involved in this. No. I think that should be a 100% hack. Um, anyway, lastly, Manon, who have we got? Uh, we have Dburn233. Needed to pull an electrician cable Electrical cable down through a wall cavity. Try this is one of those things that you were just talking about, like random weird stuff that's yeah. not engineering solutions. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. this is what I'm on about. Uh, tried a specialist electrician's cable routing cape fixed rods, didn't work. Eventually had a brainwave. My old worn out 11 speed chain, other uh, size chains are available, um, with its flexibility and weight got me down through a 2.5 meter wall cavity. Tried my electrical cable on a on and job done. Thanks Shimano. There you go. I mean, how do you, how did, how did you have this brainwave? I like Putting it. These, these two things together. Absolutely genius. I mean, that is a hack. Hack right? from me too. That Eight, is a total hack. 88% hack. There we 12%. go. 12%. Watch. That, I have a feeling, is one of the most unanimous hacky weeks we've ever had. Yeah, it's, it's 88%. Bizarre. Is 88% the lowest? Yeah, I think Oh, right. no, 86% is the lowest. That's incredible. That's still very high. Congratulations, one and all. Um, Solid hacks. Absolutely, to get involved with Hackle Bodge for next week, and the bar is scarily high now. It is. Um, can I tell you my own hack a Bodge gonna, story? <laughs> I, was, I was gonna ask if you've got. Well, anything. only that um, my nephew uh, turned up the other day saying uh, his bike was broken and a bike shop was gonna charge him 200 quid to fix it. And it was a proper like town bike, nothing worked on it. And I was like, okay. Anyway, I, Uncle Simon I, to the rescue. I bodged this thing to within an inch of its life. I was like, you know, shortening cable housing so I didn't have to buy new cables. Cool. I took his chain apart and take like ten different pieces in order to like take out the bus links. I had to replace the dropout, which I couldn't bodge. But um, otherwise, I mean, I mean, 
it might have broken on him already, and he picked it up yesterday. But I was so happy with myself that I bodged this bike with an inch of his life. Um, so touch wood, he's okay. But Let's no hope go. so. I hope so, yeah. I mean, it's a massive bodge, but still, there we go. Oh. Uh, right, anyway, upload them to the GCN app. You know what to do. Caption competition now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you gotta do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below and we will find the best and award them a bottle. And find we did amongst the thousands there or so comments. There were some good ones Yeah, last so there we week. go. Um, who's the winner, Manon? Our winner is Matthew Cow 3 and his caption is, Pogacha fears his new AI coach isn't quite giving him the answers he's looking for after asking it how to train to beat Vinugal. That is good, how to train to beat Vinugal. There was Vinugal. a lot of train um, captions. Well, I mean... Yeah. Obviously. That, yeah, that's yeah. kind of what he drew, wasn't it? But, uh, but yeah, I like that very much. Yeah, uh, well done, Matthew, get in touch and we will get your GCN Elite water bottle out to you. Um, now, Dan did say that the Saitama criterium would be keeping us going for years There's with caption gems. competition photos. Absolute and gems. so it is. This week we have Pogaccia eating the aforementioned broccoli from last week's show. A plastic wrap. A plastic, broccoli. yes. <laughs> um, can I have a go, Mal? I know you're dying too, so go on. Well, it just looks to me very much like Pogaccia is not eating broccoli, but actually doing karaoke. So, are you ready? Barcelona! You got to be pretty old to remember that one. One of Queen's yeah. greatest tracks, soundtracks. Is that exactly what he would be singing? I don't think he's old enough to remember the Barcelona Olympics, but uh, anyway, those of you who do, those of you who know, know. If you know, um, you know. Yeah. Anyway, if you think you can do better, and I think you probably can, get involved in the comment section down below. We'll pick a winner next week. Right, so we're going to go through some of our favourite comments that you've been leaving. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, in the GCN Tech Show, we have comments of the week as well. Yeah. But we do a jingle before. Yeah. I was wondering if we should do the same on the GCN Show and you should... Because, you know, you, you did do some great singing just now, so... Well, uh, John the mic. No, I mean, no, no, I think because you did such great oh, I singing see. earlier, you should give it a go. Operatic. Anything you want. <clears throat> Comments of the week! <sighs> it was fine until the end bit. <sighs> <laughs> bit of passion. <laughs> bit of passion, never hurt anyone with the singing. Love it. <laughs> uh, right, yeah, go on then. What's up first, Anyway, comments of the week. First up, and uh, last week's show. Yeah. Um, and this comment is in from Scott Bolton, 2028. And I cannot believe... I think I know what you're going to say. You and Dan did this. Uh, okay. But what is truly bonkers is that Johnny Hoogland's record won't even be recognised. Instead, Jeffrey Hoogland will take credit. Yeah. So Dan and I showing our age here. Firstly... Just a senile moment that we uh, got mm. Jeffrey Hoogerland's name wrong um, and called him Johnny Hoogerland, who uh, you might remember was a pro cyclist in about 2009, 2010. Mm. Um, you so, get yeah. with the times. Oh my word. <laughs> Massive apologies, Jeffrey. I mean, not that he's particularly bothered. The man can ride at 76k an hour on the flat His by legs himself. Do the talking, don't they? Exactly, yeah. If you've got 2,700 watts at your disposal, you're not going to be scared yeah. of me and Dan, are you? But anyway, so <laughs> massive apologies, Jeffrey, for that. Oh, God. Um, I also... If, I wonder if all your legs put together could produce that much. Well, hang on a minute. He could... My two legs could not produce as much power as one of his, which is a bit scary, isn't it? Yeah. But four of our legs... Actually, no, hang on a minute. No, we still can't, can we? Because, no, we're, no, we're like... No, 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 we're close. Four of our legs could beat one of his... You'd hope so. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> confident of that. Um, anyway, there we go. Um, I think, yeah, on a de-restricted e-bike, it couldn't be him. Probably not, now. No chance. Oh, that's incredible, isn't it? Anyway, um, another correction from under GCN. So I've made this mistake quite consistently now in GCN videos. Um, Homer Simpson did not design the Canyon Aero. Homer Simpson <laughs> designed the Homer, the Canyon Aero F, was a car that he bought and then gave to Marge because um, it had a lipstick holder instead of a cigarette lighter. Apparently, he accidentally bought the women's car. I anyway, know you were so, into your Simpsons. Well, no, I mean, I, I like the Simpsons, but I made that mistake. 
and it was pointed out to me by 342 of you in the comments. So apologies again for that one, oh Simpson fans. Um, Homer designed the Homer. So there we go. Right, anyway, moving Next on. Next comment. Uh, next comment. Um, oh my word, this is another one about me. I'm begging everyone at GCM Megabase, come to Richard Burgess, please do not let Cy anywhere near the wardrobe department unsupervised. Um, those are not from the wardrobe department. I borrowed those from uh, a loved one. <clears throat> so, um, anyway. And the fact that you now wore them in November. I did feel like a right plonker getting changed <laughs> in the car park. Like people walked past when I was standing there doing that bit to camera and they were literally like, what are you doing? And yeah, anyway. Are you going to do it again? Are we going to see it again in another two years or is that it? Probably, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, um, under the lights video, we had a comment. Big thanks for mentioning how to angle your lights. Too many times I can't see anything because other cyclists have their front lights focused on blinding others. I feel like it's a really important thing. Absolutely when you, it is. you're literally on the bike path and you're just blinded. Or like when a car's coming towards you and you're in a car and they've got a full beam on. You know, yeah. Just can't see anything. It is weird that, isn't it? But like in a car, you do it automatically that you drop the yeah. beams down, you see mm. it blind people. But on bikes, most of us are completely oblivious. Yeah. So yeah, no, mm. well done we putting that one we in We forget mind. how strong bike lights can be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well that's it, because they, anyway. <laughs> um, underneath the 30K an hour <laughs> challenge video, uh, Emil, why D one G? I feel like that's saying something, but I don't know what so it is. I think it's, it's like same a... Emily D one edge. Yeah, it's like one of those personalised number plates where you think you've spent a lot of money on that personalised number plate, but I don't know what it says. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why have you done that? Anyway, um, very entertaining concept. Maybe try it in a more remote area without traffic. Then it would be about physical endurance and not just the circumstances. Mm. Yeah, we did think about giving that one to Ollie, but uh, some say that day. he'd still be out there riding at thirty k an hour. Yeah, that's what happens when you've got aero socks and an aero bra. Exactly. Isn't it, basically. Exactly. Um, exactly. Talking about Ollie. Talking of Ollie, yeah. <laughs> His ta um, Taiwan KOM challenge, Outdoor75 commented, I've been living in Taiwan for 20 years and it, it is the best. It is the bike rider's paradise, especially if you love climbing. Ollie, well done. That's an amazing effort. Having done that climb in 2018, double amazing effort. Yeah. Taiwan is such an awesome place to ride, it really is. Um, Steve Hill, 68K, said, I'm sure Si will be doing it next year to take the GCN crown back. Mm, no, probably not. No. no. Are you scared of Ollie? No, I just don't want to show him up, you know? It's one of those oh, things really? where, well, I don't want to like come out of retirement and then, you know, like, just sort of like. I understand. Beat Nibali's record. And I, just yeah. don't think, I just don't think I need to do that. No. So, um, fair, yeah. fair enough. It was a good ride, Polly, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was a good nice. ride. Uh, right, what is coming up on the channel this week? Uh, Manon, <laughs> on Wednesday, you are telling us why your hands and feet froze until you did this. Got lots of tips and tricks in that video. Nice, I like <laughs> it. Um, things cyclists are scared of on Thursday. Friday, I am explaining tyre pressure. Um, there's a lot to unpack in that, so uh, sure. anyway, yeah, check out that one. Uh, and then Ollie and Hank are in Arizona at the minute, they aren't are. they? So they're beaming something back from Tucson. We don't know what it is yet. No, no idea. The mind boggles. Yeah, I'm sure it's good, no matter what it is. The pair of them in Arizona, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and then on Sunday, so Hank and Connor went out to the Netherlands, didn't they, the other week, to ride into <laughs> yes. a hurricane, basically. So it's the uh, World Headwind Championships. Kind of. Kind of World Headwind yeah. Championships, yeah. You'll find out in the video. You do, yeah. Uh, and then uh, don't forget as well, all the other amazing stuff that's coming up on GCN Plus. Loads of cyclocross, as we talked about, and also the documentary uh, this week on GCN Plus uh, is one close to my heart. It's um, the second one that we filmed out in the Himalayas earlier in the year. Um, so Hank and I tackled the Annapurna circuit. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Worth a watch? Well, don't know. I think so. You I'm, think so? I blooming loved it, but I don't really want to be like, oh yeah, must watch mine and Hank's film. Oh, okay, it's amazing. But no, I know, I mean, it's cool. What an amazing place. I'd go back in a heartbeat if, if I was, you know, if I could. Maybe you never know. You never know. You never, you never know. know. Um, right, I think that's it, man, aren't it? Yeah, I think brings us to the end of the GCN show. Yeah. Sad times. That's it. Congratulations to all you lot if you have made it thus far. Remember to get involved in the comments section. We love reading your comments. Um, and we will see you next week. So I'll be back with another comments of the week jingle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh.